Hello everyone and welcome to our round two, first round, round of 16, gold bracket round of the TTM Surge bracket. Um, I will be taking on Randy um, this week. I, I don't know if like team name matters as much in this, so this is a Randy HLD. We have faced him and his Texas Pokemon Rangers before in the GBA D League. Um, both of us representing this GBA D League on this side of the bracket, and hopefully uh, we can pick up the win and continue on in this bracket, but arguably his team is the scariest, in my opinion, in the entire bracket. If I had to pick a champion, I think uh, Randy has drafted better than anybody else, uh, in my personal opinion. So, his team of Pelipper, Kabutops, Pilliswine, Ferrothorn, Raichu, Meloetta, Simeon, and Ludicolo. I don't usually do, uh, like, a team builder during my uh, stream, or during my recording, but um, I'm going to now, guys. Look, look at the Metang right now. Look at the Metang. Hold on, hold. On. I don't even know how that happened. Uh, we're gonna put that. You put that back where you found it. So uh, my team, as we're gonna see, is a Choice Scarf, Darmanitan, uh, Normal Gem, Fake Out, Unburdened, Hitmonlee, uh, Rotom Frost with an Eject Button, Figgy Berry, Araquanid, Metang with the Eviolite, and a Focus Sash, Alakazam to counter his team. Um, I'm not doing a team builder this week just because uh, there's not a lot of time to team build and not a lot of time to edit So we're gonna be rocking out with this. Hopefully you guys get adjusted to the sets as you see them I know a lot of people don't watch my team builders anyway So that's how you're used to doing it regardless But that is what we're gonna be rocking out with this week And we are expecting him on his side to bring his rain core of Pelipper, Cabotops, and Ludicolo Cabotops being a Zemon, um, possibly Pharaoh, Pilliswine, and uh, Raichu for my Rotom specifically uh, since all those things are threats to Rotom, um, and I don't like seeing them. So, honestly, there's nothing on his team that he could bring that I would be comfortable facing. His team is absolutely terrifying. Um, both Meloetta and Pissimian put in a lot of pressure uh, if they do manage to come. So, hopefully, we get uh, the W here, but if I go out to this team, I expect this team to go far into this tournament. I hope you guys are excited. Strap in. It's going to be a fun one. We are going to do everything we can to win. Don't get me wrong. I'll see you guys back here in a second when we get this battle started with Randy. Alright everyone, welcome back. We're going to get this right started here. Uh, no wasting time, nothing like that. We are just jumping right into it. So we are going to see both the Pissimian and the Meloetta. No Pilliswine and no Ferrothorn. Okay, so we take off the Ferrothorn, take off the Pilliswine, uh, and let's get Meloetta and Pissimian put into place here. Um... Now, those are both scary mons. I mean, I'm not, like I said earlier, I there is nothing he would bring that would make me happier than him bringing nothing. Um, so, six mons. Of course, he does have all six, unfortunately. Um, his only real switch in would be a Lightning Rod Araquanid to a Rotom Volt switching. Um, and Raichu just doesn't threaten my Rotom that much, barring a Focus Blast. Um... And Focus Blast, don't get me wrong, that would hurt. Um, and he could bring it just for my Rotom, but... I do have answers for that potential contingency. So I could lead Rotom, uh, threaten the burn, threaten to kill his uh, Pelipper or anything like that. Um, and anything that isn't Meloetta uh, really gets scared by Rotom. Alakazam, very important to keep for late game. Really, really going to try to take out the Pelipper. Um, I do like Webbs a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, his Ferrothorn, um, which I totally marked down that he didn't have, but he does because he doesn't have the Ludicolo. Was that the other thing that he was missing? I marked his team down wrong. But I'll take a look at it in a second. Um, I did see the Ferrothorn at the end there. I think he was missing the Ludicolo. Um, but... Uh, Arachnid comes in on the Ferrothorn pretty freely. So yeah, he's going to lead straight off with his Pelver. And he's probably going to switch right out into his Raichu when he sees my Rotom. Um, which means I could get a free Willow here. On that Raichu switch in. But if he doesn't do that... Um, hold on, let me take a look. I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm marking that down correctly. That he does have the Ferrothorn instead of the Ludicolo. Okay. So I thought, I was I was like, I'd be, he'd be crazy not to bring the Pharaoh against me, but I was okay with his craziness, you know? But, uh, Pharaoh's here. Ludicolo's gone. Alright, so... We can straight Volt Switch. Um, and if he doesn't go out into his Raichu, then Volt Switch kills. 
We also can scout out whether he's got a lot of speed investment on this thing or not if he goes for like a U-turn. Um, Raichu without Focus Blast isn't doing anything to Rotom like I said. Now he could just go straight into his Lightning Rod Raichu. I could go for a Willow. He has nothing immune to Willow. I don't think he's just going to sack Pelipper here. I really don't. And basically everything on his team could be physical. So yeah, I'm going to go for a Willow here. He's probably just going to hard switch. He's just going to hard switch right into Raichu. Leo. That is the Raichu. So that's fine. We're going to get a Willow off on this Raichu. Um, we don't know what set he's running. He could be like Nasty Plot Sweeper. Um, but that's okay if he is. Just because he can't like extreme speed now uh, reliably. Um, Focus Blast isn't going to kill me. So, I could go for a Pain Split here. Um, he will naturally have more HP than me regardless, so even if he doesn't uh, go for anything strong, he will out-HP me. Um, I don't have a great switch into Raichu, it sort of is my Rotom. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is just kind of the way it's going to have to be. Um, Metang can take a hit or two from Raichu, but doesn't want to take a knockoff. Um, and if he Volt switches, then I do get the uh, Eject button to activate. Um, which means that he doesn't actually get to switch out his Raichu. If he nasty plots, then that's what it is. So I'm going to go for a pain split here and see what he wants to do. Um, just go straight for a T-Bolt. So that's going to do very little. He's going to see that I'm extremely bulky. Um, and I'm going to eject button, which is fine. Um, so I get a safe switch into something. We don't know if he's scarfed or anything. But we know that he's got T-Bolt. I can go out into my Hitmonlee straight up and go for the uh, Fake Out. He could go out into his Ferrothorn, which would be annoying but not the end of the world. And start trying to set up with the Hitmonlee. Um, since his Meloetta hasn't done anything yet. I could go out into Metang here, which can take the knockoff and get the rocks up. Which I think is the better play. Um, definitely the better play. And then if he does go into his Pelipper to Defog, I can always just Toxic that, which is what I want to do anyway. A little bit of burn damage. So we are going to set up our rocks here. Um, and if he has knockoff, he has knockoff. That is what it is. We haven't seen his item yet, so he could be Scarfed. I don't think he specs based on that damage. Um, we went down to 94 from 125. What is that? 125 minus 94. 31 damage. Um, yeah, that's below what Timid Specs would be. But it would be above Modest No Boosting Item. Which is a really interesting thing. So Thunderbolt... So either he's, he may not be max special attack. Let's take a look at that damage on the Metang from the Raichu. Um, takes a little bit of burn damage. So we are down to 107, so he did 60. Which is above Timid, but within the range of Modest. And I did go down to 94, right? Yeah. So he shouldn't have done 31 if he doesn't have some sort of boosting item. But I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's a magnet? Sixty is within the range of Timid Magnet. <laughs> it's not Life Orb we see. It's not spec. It's too low of damage. So we got our rocks up. I don't want to click Thunder Punch because he could stay in and Thunderbolt again. Uh, Rotom could come back in here. We still have our Eviolite, which means this thing does have a, a switch in at least to Pelipper once later in the game. Um, and is still a pretty reliable answer to Pharaoh, although it doesn't really do anything to Pharaoh in return with the set that I'm running. So I could go back into Rotom here um, on a predictable switch into um, 
honestly anything except for Passimian, which I don't see coming in on a Matang. Um, I don't think he's going to go into Pelipper, though. If I really was ballsy, I would go for the Thunder Punch here, but not thinking, I, don't, I don't think I'm feeling that. So I'm going to go into the Rotom. I apologize that my turns are taking so long. Um, this is a really, really tough battle for me to win, and I really need to make sure that I'm doing the right thing every turn. Um, so he's going to Volt Switch, so we know he's not choice in any way. Um, and that's alright. So, we do have our Rotom in here, and he's going to go out into something. Um, I don't know what he's, I don't know what his item is, um, gonna be honest. Volt Switch, if he was Magnet, again, that's like, or like, or like Electric Plate with Timid. Um, I was at 94, so this should be doing something between 21 and 26. I didn't see what I got down to yet, so we'll see when he comes back in. Um, the Passimian is the thing that I think would be the, would make the most sense here. Because Passimian really puts in a lot of pressure. Close combat will just straight Oko. Um, And I wouldn't, I wouldn't go hard to rack on it on that at all. Um, but I really don't want my Rotom going down, because it threatens the Pelipper so much. I do have other answers to the Pelipper if I have to. Now if he goes with Simeon, he could U-turn back into his Raichu. That's Meloetta. That's Meloetta. Hmm. I can pay and split. Haven't revealed it because I got booped out. Um, which I think is the play. And if he does do his crazy relic song into the other Meloetta that's really, really fast, then we handle that later uh, with our him only going for fake out and then having the normal gem, which he has no ghost type for. So, I'm going to click Pain Split, Hyper Voice, we should eat that, we don't eat that, okay, that's a crit, oh goody, oh goody, alright, that's how this game's going to go, I see, I see, um, Araquanid could come in here on this thing pretty freely, um, We know he has Hyper Voice, so he's at least somewhat specially invested, I would assume. Um, yeah, it's doing about 40%. Um, Lunge is doing about 50 to 60%. I don't think he stays in, just because I could have the mirror coat. So lunge could be useful on whatever does decide to come in, which could easily be the Pelipper here, since he could be predicting the sticky web. I think liquidation is better on the Pelipper though, and it's actually slightly stronger against this as well. So I am going to click liquidation. He goes for the size shock. Which does negligible damage. We're in the rain. Boosted liquidation. Um, doesn't quite take it out. I don't really want to be weaker than I am right now. Oh, that was close. Don't love... Don't love that. Metang doesn't want to take two hits. Araquanid... I mean, he can take another hit, for sure. He may save this thing. Although I have the rocks up, so I don't see him sa saving this thing, so I see him attacking again. Unless he thinks he's going to get rid of the rocks, which is entirely within his, re his right to believe that he can do. Uh, we do recognize that Pelipper is damp rock now. We have confirmed that. This is the sixth turn of rain. Um...
I can just liquidation again. Lose out on my potentially lose out on the webs, but not necessarily. Ferrothorn doesn't really touch me. So yeah, I'm gonna click liquidation again. He's probably just gonna like click a move. Um, unless they go down. So yeah, we survive that, we take a liquidation, and he goes down. So we do see that uh Meloetta kills Rotom Frost with Hyper Voice. And then Araquanid kills Meloetta with Liquidation. Not killing on the first one sucked. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie, that was that was miserable. We actually haven't seen like what items anything's holding. This is Raichu. Rocks damage. A little bit of burn next turn. Could go into Matang here, but I really don't think I want to. There's really nothing I want to do here. Like I said, his team is absolutely horrifying. Um, Araquanid does still have a chance to set up Sticky Webs on the Pharaoh. So that's certainly not something I'm going to throw away right now. Rocks are useful but not required, really only hitting the Pelipper hard. Um, Matang. What value does Matang serve me for the rest of this game? Not, not a whole heap of a ton. And I don't, he's not Scarfed, which means Darm's going to outspeed this thing. Uh, he does have the Pelipper still for the Darm, but I can click Rock Slide if the Raichu is weak enough, and it'll do a lot of damage to it. Um, Rock Slide's doing, yeah, Rock Slide should kill from this range, as long as I land it. Um, and obviously the Simeon or, or the Pharaoh can come in on that, but I can always switch that out and come back in later. Um, so I think the Matang has the least value to me at this point. Um, if he does go for a Thunderbolt instead of a Volt Switch here, then I think he too a KOs. Um, Rain's going to stop. A little bit more burn damage. We don't have Bullet Punch this week. Which is what it is. Um, we already have the rocks up, so I don't need to click rocks again. He may switch out. Though I don't see why he necessarily would. Now, Hitmonlee is getting in better and better position to sweep. Um, I'm going to click Toxic. Mostly because I can't click anything else. And I think he's going to kill me. Um, but that's okay, I was sacking this off anyway. Raichu kills Matang with Thunderbolt. So now I could go into Darm and click Rock Slide. Or even Flare Blitz, honestly. Although he probably just goes Pelipper and then straight into Kabutops from there. And then I have to sack something. What I can't do is let the Kabutops come for free, so I could go into Darm and click U-Turn. Reveal that I'm Scarfed. Um, but... Potentially take out the Raichu. But again, then I'd have to sack something. Or I go into him only click Fake Out. And try to sweep. Which... Aside from the Passimian... I should be able to do. So we're going to click Fake Out. He's going to protect on my Fake Out. Does this activate my normal gem or not? It doesn't. Which means I don't get my Unburden boost. But he does take a little bit of burn damage. Now we are in a situation where... Mock Punch... Oh, Mock Punch is a roll. Mock Punch is a roll. Thunderbolt 2 at KOs, but I don't have speed anything right now, but that's okay. Because I can always bring this thing back in later. I do like the Mock Punch roll. I don't really want to take 60% on this, but I don't have a switch in right now. 
So I am going to click Mock Punch. If I get this roll, then we're in great shape. I don't. He clicks Thunderbolt. He gets the para. <sighs> okay. So, Rotom Frost kills Raichu with Burn. Okay. Raichu's dead. Now, him only naturally outspeeds Pelipper. So even with the Para, if I can get the normal gem fake off, fake off, fake out boost, I still will outspeed the Pelipper and the Pharaoh, uh, and a non-rain boosted Kabutops, which I can't guarantee will happen at this point. So he does go into the Pelipper, um, and he's definitely just going to either, he could click Defog to try to get rid of my rocks. The real question is, do I switch out my Hitmonlee and sack something, since it's paralyzed anyway, or do I click Stone Edge predicting a defog and give Alakazam the best chance to win the game? Now we know he switched out on the Rotom, but he didn't reveal how fast he was. And Psychic does guaranteed kill without bulk on a Pelipper after rocks. <sighs> and Darn will outspeed this thing. I click Stone Edge if he defogs. There's the defog, come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> How do we come back now? How do we come back from para, full para, him on the... Again, it naturally outspeeds Pelper. So if I can get the Unburden boost, I'm back to neutral. I don't think the sticky webs are going to happen this game. Alakazam still has its sash intact. There's the hurricane. We're gonna let Arachnid die. Now he may have protect on this as well. I don't know what his bulk is like. I really don't. Do I think that he bulk invested to live a rock slide from a Darmanitan? I think that's less likely. But, if I go into Darm, and I click Rock Slide, then I'm going to have to sack <coughs> something. He might have Protect for my Hitmonlee. So the question is, is Darm or Hitmonlee more valuable late game? I think Darm is more valuable late game, but Hitmonlee could go down for nothing right now. That does... Uh, I think it, it has to, though. Like, it doesn't do that much for me if it doesn't get this off, and he has Protect on everything, which he could do, just to not ever let me get this normal gem fake out, then... What do I do? I mean, let's see the Protect. Or do you go in Pharaoh, which is fine if you go to Pharaoh. That thing probably just protects on my high jump kick, but that's... Okay. Switch it out into Pharaoh. So we do get our normal gem fake out. She's gonna do 10%, 6%. Iron barbs. 
Rocky Helmet. And I'm going to kill myself on this high jump kick, but I'm going to click it. I have no choice. If he protects, he protects. I'm fully paralyzed. He sets up his rocks. I don't really... don't know if I really care about that. He's not Choppel. He survives. He's got enough investment to survive. I'm just going to die the, to the recoil here. Um, which is what it is. There's this layer of spikes. Okay. Now, Alakazam doesn't care. Alakazam does not care about any of that. And I can go into Alakazam, I can click Psychic, it'll kill the Ferrothorn from there. Darm does not appreciate either of those things. But it is Scarfed Darmanitan, which outspeeds everything except his Cabotops. Which is why Alakazam needs his Sash intact. But I can click Psychic. And kill a Ferrothorn. Because heck if I'm clicking Focus Blast in this game. Um, so we could go into Cabotops here. I do have the Energy Ball. There's Cabotops. Do I think he's going to be rocking the berry? The grass berry, which name the name of escapes me at present. Um, it wouldn't matter if he's a hyper-offensive set. Um, I don't think he's going to be Grassberry. Rindo. Rindoberry. That's the one. Um, and like I said, if he's hyper-offensive... This is a Zemon. Energy Ball still kills. What are we doing for rain right now? What are we looking at? Two turns of rain? I kind of want to protect here. But I also kind of just want to click Energy Ball. In case he goes for like a Sword Stance. But if he doesn't, then he has his last turn of rain. But then I just protect on that turn, and then I have speed. But he could have Aqua Jet. It's not going to matter. It's not going to matter one way or the other. Liquidation. We're going to live with our Sash. Going to click Energy Ball. Now, Pelipper... The problem is the two Pokemon he has left. If he goes Passimian now, I have to assume he's Scarfed. Um, but if he's he hesitant, then that means maybe he's not Scarfed? I kind of have to just play it out as if he's not Scarfed for Simeon. If he goes Pelipper now, then he's definitely not. Um, but if he goes Pelipper now, he doesn't get his rain back. Which means Flare Blitz from a Passimi from a Darmanitan is <coughs> just that much stronger. So there's Passimian. Are you Scarfed? Are you Choice Scarfed Passimian to handle my Alakazam? I kind of need to know. And while I want to protect, I also don't think I can protect because of the fact that this is the last turn of rain. If he U-turns out into Pelipper, he doesn't get it back. So I'm going to click Psychic. He's probably Scarfed. And that means he probably kills me and wins the game. I don't think I played poorly. I think I did everything I could possibly do. 
Um, I prepped as well as I possibly could. How do you prep for Thunderbolt and Para and lots of Para hacks everywhere? Uh, you don't. Simple answer. Um, that second Para really didn't matter that much. Rocks versus what rocks and one layer spikes is sort of irrelevant. Knockoff. Uh, so he is scarfed. Um, it is the last turn of rain. That's not going to matter. I don't think I can kill this in one shot um, with Fire Blast or Fire Blast Flare Blitz. Um, so I am scarfed. I am outspeeding it, but um, that isn't going to matter. His Pelipper can get the rain back up. Um, and that is going to be the game. So Randy is going to take this one. A um, little bit of hacks went his way. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you do what you got to do. Uh, you play the game you have to play. In comes the Pelipper uh, to set that rain back up to make sure that he can survive a Flare Blitz. So we're going to be hoping for Flare Blitz crits um, or really random uh, really random burns or something on things. Um, but I don't even think I can necessarily... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not ever going to take this thing out. Um, so that is good game to Randy. Um, he will be moving on. In my opinion, like I said, his team is the scariest team in this tournament. Um, so I expect him to go very, very far. Um... Hey, way to get that crit at the end there. You know what? Shoutouts to you, Darmanitan, for fighting through this and doing the best you could do. That is the game that we had to play. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my little tiny run, baby run, in the bracket. Um, unfortunately, we have to go out with an L that I don't know if uh, I had to take. Um, without that para, that Hitmonlee could have done a lot more work. I would not have had to waste it on the Ferrothorn the way that I did. Um, but... Thank you all again so much, so much for watching. I will see you guys also this weekend with the IBL. Next weekend, we're starting up the ICBA. So we've got plenty of stuff coming your way. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing to be not doing three leagues at the same time. Uh, but I was really enjoying my little low-tier team. Uh, it's because I dropped Grumpig. It's because I dropped Grumpig, guys. I know, that's, I know that's what it is. Anyway, hope you guys are excited and continue to watch other stuff in the Token Minorities uh, series and, and tournament. Good luck to Randy. Um, watch his side of the channel. His link will be in the description below, so you guys can go watch his side. See how he reacts to those crits, not crits, uh, para and hacks and stuff. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoy the video and the rest of your day. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care, everybody.